Beef Wellington is a paradox. Its puff pastry crust needs to be cooked really hot to become golden brown and crispy, while the cannon of beef tenderloin just underneath needs to stay about 70 degrees cooler for a juicy medium rare. Done well, it's a superb dish that's the perfect holiday centerpiece. But for many cooks, preparing this dish is their Waterloo. Today, we'll use ice as the ultimate insulator by freezing it. We'll use an unconventional two-step baking from frozen strategy for a perfectly cooked Wellington so that you can conquer the Wellington and proclaim, who's the Duke now? Let's get going. Start by seasoning the center cut of a beef tenderloin with about 1% of its weight in salt. Then wrap it tight for a cylindrical shape. I'm going to cook this sous vide at 130 degrees Fahrenheit for foolproof edge to edge medium rare. But you should feel free to reverse sear yours or even barbecue the beef low and slow if you want to add the smoky flavor of freedom. Sous vide also makes it easy to see just how much juice comes out during cooking. Cook to 130 degrees. It's about 15% of the meat's weight. These juices won't be making our crust soggy now and they can be put to better use in a sauce. And when we reheat this beef during the final cook, there won't be a lot more juice loss. Juices mostly leak as muscle proteins denature and contract during cooking. Once that's done, it's done. And by getting rid of the juices now, it's much easier to get a great sear on the surface. For the best results, I'm gonna chill this for at least 30 minutes before I do the final sear. I'm going to shallow fry this in a roughly 80-20 mixture of canola oil and beef tallow at 400 degrees Fahrenheit to sear it. This is a compromise between pan searing and deep frying that I covered in depth in my video on searing science. It takes a lot less oil than deep frying and still sears faster and more evenly than pan frying. This sear looks pretty good to me. I'll season this with some fresh ground pepper and then this can go chill in the fridge while we prep our insulating layer of mushroom duxelle and then wrap everything up. Duxelle is just a French word for chopped mushrooms and shallots that are seasoned and cooked until dry. You can use a food processor, but I like the slightly coarser and more uniform texture you get from hand chopping and mincing. Plus, wielding double knives is just kind of awesome. Mushrooms are about 90% water by weight, so we need to slowly cook that out of them so they can absorb any of the residual meat juices when the Wellington is baked. I'm using beef fat for flavor, but any cooking oil or butter will do. And be sure to season this mix with salt, pepper, and some herbs like thyme and oregano. Use a touch of Madeira if you want to be traditional, and feel free to flame off the alcohol if you're a touch dramatic, like me. Okay, our beef has been pre-cooked, our mushroom duck cells are done. All we need to do now is assemble this beef wellington which is really no big deal. Unless you're in a rush and it's two hours to dinner and you're frantically rushing around trying to pull this all together. This isn't Iron Chef. Don't be that person. All of this prep can and should be done days or even weeks in advance because we're going to freeze this Wellington once it's done. Trying to prepare your beef Wellington on the same day you're gonna serve it is just asking for an ass kicking. Start by laying out a layer of thin sliced cured meat on some parchment paper. Prosciutto is classic, but I'm a fan of using lardo if you can get it. It's essentially pure bacon fat, and it's the perfect waterproof membrane to put between the pastry and everything else. Now spread out the duck cell. Take your time and work this into an even layer, about a quarter of an inch thick, and the same width as your meat, with just enough length to make it all the way around the meat without overlap. Now for the beef. Season it generously with some fresh ground pepper, and then brush it with some Dijon mustard. Place the meat into position, and then use the plastic wrap to help you roll everything around the beef. Don't be afraid to make some adjustments for fit as needed. Use the plastic wrap to tighten everything up into a tight cylinder, but don't overdo it and cause the ends to bulge. You want them to be relatively flat. Now back into the fridge while we get the puff pastry ready. I'm using store-bought puff pastry. It's high quality, and I'd recommend it unless you've got a compelling reason to do otherwise. All I need to do is lightly roll it out to remove creases, trim it just a bit wider than the beef, and just long enough to fit around everything. Clear the board and put some plastic wrap down. 
Then place the pastry back onto the plastic so everything can be rolled up. Give the pastry a bit of an egg wash that's going to glue everything together. Now place the meat log onto the prep pastry and let's roll this all up. Flatten the excess pastry at the ends like so and then trim. Congratulations, that's it, you're done. Unless you're an overachiever. Then make a lattice from another sheet of puff pastry using a lattice cutter. Spread it out and drape it over an egg washed Wellington. Take the time to even out the lattices and tuck everything nicely around the edge. That's it. All the prep is done. All you have to do now is freeze it. And this can stay in the freezer for weeks or even months. But before I do, I'm gonna make a hole for my wireless predictive thermometer that I've designed and built with my team at Combustion Inc. Because I will not be able to insert this once this is frozen solid. I insert it vertically like this, poking all the way through to the other side. The predictive thermometer's eight sensors will let me measure the temperature everywhere, at the crust, in the duct cell, at the surface of the meat, and it will find the true core too. Total temperature awareness is really useful when you care about more than just the temperature at the center of the meat. Once this is chilled enough, I'll wrap it well for frozen storage. When it's time to feast, you have very little work to do. Preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 230 Celsius, and use convection if you have it. Then remove your Wellington from the freezer. Let the pastry thaw for a few minutes, and as it does, brush it with some egg wash. If you're OCD like me, you can put a rosemary sprig in each lattice window. And then reinsert your combustion predictive thermometer. And into the oven it goes. Depending on your oven, it takes about 30 or 40 minutes for the puff pastry to turn golden brown and cook all the way through. At this point, the mushroom duct cells are hot, the surface of the meat has thawed, it hasn't overcooked at all. The ice did its job. But things are still a bit icy at the core. It's time for phase two of our baking. Turn the oven down as low as it will go, ideally 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Open the door for a few minutes to get the temperature down quickly. And now wait for the core to reheat to at least 105 degrees Fahrenheit, which the predictive thermometer's physics engine says will take another 45 minutes. If you don't have a predictive thermometer, you'll just need to use an instant read and keep checking the temperature. And as the beef finishes heating through, try not to let the surface get hotter than about 120 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Remember, the beef has already been cooked medium rare, so we just need to reheat it to a temperature hot enough to serve. And it's done. This looks pretty good. For the skeptics, here's a comparison of this Wellington and one that was cooked from chilled, but not frozen. It's not even close. The conventional approach has both some overcooked meat at the surface and an undercooked crust. The cooked from frozen Wellington has a crust that's cooked all the way through, and the meat is medium rare from edge to edge. That looks pretty good to me. I'll put all of the details from my recipe, including weights and measures in the description below. And if you give it a try, let me know in the comments. One more thing. I'd like to thank all of my viewers and subscribers for making this channel a success in 2023. I'm looking forward to creating more videos for you in 2024. Let me know what you'd like to see in the comments. But for now, I'll simply say thank you so very much for watching and happy holidays.